Hi, welcome to the IT Service Management Mentor. Please do subscribe. Let's focus on shift left as a refresher. So the term comes from software testing area. It's about moving the fixes, moving the bugs, the issues, etc. back into the build and the test teams. So it, it's effectively putting those items earlier into the life cycle rather than waiting for them to be at the end of that life cycle to then oh we need to fix them in a, in a nutshell you're moving work back to the source the result you end up with a more efficient a more effective approach to work you're working smarter not harder you're improving workflow and you're delivering value in, in a much more effective way you're perhaps uh, delivering items quicker, you're doing it more efficiently, maybe more accurately, cheaper perhaps even, but certainly more customer focused. And we'll come on to that as, as to why it's more customer focused. So if we consider the steps in, um, in software development, you have your um, information uh, requirements gathering stage, you, you've got the designing it, element you've got the develop it you've then got the testing element and then you pass that over to your BAU and your support function the shift left approach is about putting that testing bit closer to the requirement gathering part and then technically by doing that you should have less issues in prod in in the live environment it's cheaper it's less disruptive to customers if you fix an issue earlier on rather than waiting for it to be uh, in production um, it, it's clearly less disruptive to your customer but it's also cheaper because you're not having to do it twice in the context of IT operations and IT support it might mean moving a third line assignment group ticket back over to your second line on your first line uh, function so as a, as a real world example I can talk about a situation where I looked at uh, the the tickets that were going into a third line subject matter expert um, uh, support assignment group, a third line group for applications. And when I looked at a number of those tickets and certainly spoke to a number of the individuals in that assignment group, they would say, hey, you know what, some of these tickets in here, they're not third line tickets. It's just that we know how to fix them. They're fairly straightforward. It's it, it's not complex particularly. It's just historically they've they've always landed in in this advanced third line group. So we performed an activity where we created documentation, training, awareness, so on and so forth, and we skilled up second line and first line. And the net result of that meant that when those tickets that partic uh, the, those particular tickets that would come in and they would go through the triage approach, or maybe there'd be an element of swarming, but certainly it would eventually arrive in third line. The new approach was that the first line and the second line uh, assignment groups now knew how to fix those and, and they had a script and they had documentation and they, they could simply advise the customer this is what you need to do. A much better experience rather than um, it, it coming into first, going into second, going into third line and that actually had a, a, a positive benefit in terms of first line fix metrics as well but we, we moved activities that were in the third line assignment group over to the first and the second line assignment group which meant quicker resolution times better first time fix metrics if we think about shift left approach generally it applies to a number of ITIL 4 practices that you need to be considering namely release management deployment management service validation and testing service request management and service desk function so why would you do it well my question is why wouldn't you do it if it's improving quality it's improving speed perhaps that's resolution time or perhaps that's um, uh, time from a service request to fulfillment as an example that might be might be improved or perhaps uh, in the case of an incident something's getting resolved first line and first time rather than having to go into third line it improves employee productivity because whatever that issue is it's stopping them from doing their job if somebody can just simply phone up a service desk function as an example uh, or there's a self-service ability and they can fix it there and then on the spot brilliant that's a big productivity 
tick there. It's less disruption uh, to production generally. Also, if depending on your cost model, you, you can see a cost reduction because there's going to be less tickets that are effectively perhaps going through a, um, a, a contact centre or, or a service desk function of some kind because people are able to resolve issues themselves perhaps. Greater knowledge and a greater work variety for your agents, for your IT agents. So maybe that might have a knock-on effect on employee retention levels because rather than the first line uh, team simply focusing on one particular type of um, issue or, or activity, you can spread their knowledge. You can give them some of those other areas. I gave an example on third line a few moments ago. Cost reduction, certainly in terms of maybe the cost per incident um, um, element, but also perhaps in terms of, from a development perspective, you don't need to rework, you don't need to do it twice. So it's gone through the cycle, it's gone into production, yes, there's a problem, back to the beginning, fix it. Let's fix it first time right at the beginning within the, the build stage, M much better to, to capture it there in the testing and, and the building. And improves customer satisfaction. Why wouldn't you want to do that? If you're um, delighting your customer and making um, items uh, uh, less disruptive to them or easier or more efficient or automated, why wouldn't you want to do that? So then let's build an approach. First off, we would look at identifying the shift left opportunities. What is there? What are the goals? That involves looking at data and those that data may be um, metrics or reports or it may be you going out into a business and speaking to people and, and getting stakeholder feedback or it may be um, just looking at a workflow for example and looking at how tickets are or service requests or development items are going from one team to another team is there a better way of of, of doing that are there any repetitive items in there that, that you may spot but certainly frustrations speaking to people getting out there into the business talk to people understand what 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 doesn't work as well as it as it could be and then Clarify your costs and, and the benefits of uh, this activity. So you need to produce a, a business case. It doesn't need to be complicated, but you, you can start to um, set expectations. Look at, OK, well, how much is this going to cost? How long is it going to take? What are, what are the um, uh, metrics have we got that, that we can look at? By doing this, by making this investment in time, this investment in quality, this investment in terms of money, what's the benefit? What, what are we getting out of it by, by doing it? Is it worth it? And then look at lots of different areas. Don't just think in, a, in sort of a, a narrow vision. Think around... Look at um, people. How are people working? How are the teams working? What about the structures? Are there, is there any recruitment? What about roles? Perhaps practices and processes. And then targets. So important you define targets. Make sure you've got some kind of goal that you're working towards. Maybe it's as simple as we want less escalations or we want to improve our um, audit failure points from five to three or you know whatever they they may be maybe there's a deployment element that says you want to uh, deploy more um often so the number of deployments you do at the moment is x you want to work towards y and then set up that improvement initiative so there'll be lots of activities there that that need to be thought through there's planning you need to sell those benefits and and the and the impact you need a feedback mechanism. How are you going to get that feedback? And then progress incrementally. So look at the four dimensions. If we think from, from an I till four perspective, those, those four dimensions, you've got organization and people, information and technology, partners and suppliers, value streams and processes. Think through those. Think about how can you do these, uh, the, these steps to, to, to improve things. And then the final point is around review the outcome. So did it deliver? Did it do what you said it would do? Are there any things that you might look at retrospectively and say, OK, well, uh, we need to think around next time we do this, we'll do it in a slightly different way by, by doing 
X, Y, Z, what is it? And then don't forget to communicate. Make sure you, you demonstrate those benefits of being, being delivered. Make sure your stakeholders are, are, are informed. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. Just a very quick overview. Thank you.